we talk about the top seven causes and treatments of dizziness and vertigo. When people say dizziness, they usually mean different things like spinning, feeling faint or being lightheaded and unsteady. So dizziness is, is the umbrella term. When you feel that the environment is spinning or moving, it is called vertigo. When you feel that you might faint, it is called lightheadedness or pressing cope. When you have trouble walking steadily and balancing, it is called imbalance. The first and most common cause of vertigo is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It happens when a person feels a sensation of spinning while rolling over in bed or looking up or down. So vertigo appears after specific triggers. Commonly it happens when a person is getting up or lying down. It usually happens after age 50 but can occur at any age. It's more common in women. In the inner ear we have small organs where there are tiny calcium crystals called otoliths. These crystals normally sit on a gel-like layer sensing gravity and linear motion. When we move they shift slightly and stimulate hair cells underneath them sending impulses to the brain. So with these crystals we feel when we tilt our head or accelerate that during this disease these crystals break loose from their original place and float into the semicircular canals which are part of the balance system designed to detect rotation not linear motion. These canals are fed with fluid and when calcium crystals appear there it disrupts the flow and sends wrong signals to the brain and the person has a spinning sensation um, the idea of treatment is to return these calcium crystals to their original places. The best treatment is the Epley maneuver, which is effective in 80 to 90% of cases after one to two sessions. anti drugs like Meclizine can help, but only temporarily to manage symptoms. The second most common cause of vertigo is vestibular migraine. This condition is a migraine which includes vertigo as a symptom, but sometimes vertigo occurs even without headache. It is more common in women after age 30. The main characteristic of this disease is vertigo episodes which usually last for hours. It can be both a spinning or non-spinning sensation, but with a feeling of imbalance. It can be accompanied with or without headache, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity and visual disturbances like zigzag patterns and flashing lights called aura. This condition is not associated with hearing loss or tinnitus. This disease can be triggered by stress, menstruation, certain foods or sensory overload like bright lights. So triggers usually exist. To diagnose vestibular migraine, these vertigo episodes should happen at least five times and each episode lasts from five minutes to three days. At least half of the cases should be associated with headache, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity or visual aura. It is thought that vestibular migraine is related to the brainstem. <laughs> this part regulates signals from the inner ear. Sometimes this signal processing is disrupted and causes vertigo. Also it can be caused by abnormal actation of nerves and then depression. It is called cortical spreading depression. And it also can be caused by blood flow disruption and inflammation in the vestibular system. Vestibular migraine is highly associated with genetics and stress. The treatment is stress management, sleep, mindfulness, yoga, avoiding alcohol, caffeine and processed foods. For severe vertigo cases, meclizine or benzodiazepines can be used. Beta blockers like propranolol can prevent severe episodes in 60% of patients. Also calcium channel blockers are effective for prevention. Sometimes tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline reduce frequency and severity of vertigo. The third most common cause of dizziness and vertigo is Meniere's disease. It is a disease where a person has recurrent episodes of vertigo. Each episode lasts more than 20 minutes. It's associated with hearing loss over time. Also ringing, buzzing or roaring sounds in the affected ear. The person has a sensation of pressure or fullness in the affected ear. Initially symptoms start in one ear, but in 30% of cases it progresses into both ears. So the main characteristic of the disease is vertigo and dizziness episodes plus hearing loss and noise in the ears. We do not know why it happens. Most cases are idiopathic, 
but genetics, viral infections like herpes virus and autoimmune processes have their role. Also anatomical abnormalities of the inner ear drainage system. The treatment is a low sodium diet which reduces fluid retention in the inner ear. In 70% of cases it improves symptoms. Avoid alcohol, caffeine and stress. Diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide also reduce fluid buildup in the inner ear. Effective also in more than 50% of patients. Miclizine or diazepam are used during severe vertigo attacks, corticosteroids, oral or intratympanic injections into the ear are effective for autoimmune or severe cases. Steroid injections stabilize hearing loss. In many cases, around 50% of cases. Also, and the lymphatic sac decompression surgery improves progression of hearing loss in 60% of cases when resistant to conservative treatment. Hearing aids also help in many cases to improve adaptation with hearing loss. The antamycin injection is effective for vertigo but can worsen hearing loss. Surgery in severe cases. The fourth most common cause of dizziness and vertigo is vestibular neuritis. In this case, vertigo starts suddenly and lasts for days to weeks. No hearing loss in this case. If hearing loss happens also, it is labyrinthitis, involuntary eye movement, nystagmus. Balance problems and a tendency to fall towards the affected side are also common. Mm. This condition usually occurs because of a viral infection. Happens usually after upper respiratory or gastrointestinal viral infection. For the treatment, antihistamines, mechizine and dimenhydrinate are used with high effectiveness. Also benzodiazepines. The fifth most common cause is orthostatic hypotension. It is lightheadedness or dizziness or even fainting when a person moves from lying to sitting or standing positions. Mm. No vertigo in this case. Mm. And it happens due to sudden blood pressure dropping upon standing. You should measure blood pressure before and after standing and rule out cardiac arrhythmias and structural heart diseases. More common in older adults with decreased baroreceptor sensitivity. Antihypertensives and diuretics also can cause orthostatic hypotension. Also prolonged bed rest. Solution is to rise slowly from sitting or lying positions. Adequate fluid intake is effective in 70% of patients. And compression stockings effective in more than 50% of patients. Leg crossing and muscle tension maneuvers before and when standing to increase blood pressure. The sixth cause is not the most common, but is one of the most important transient ischemic attack. A person has sudden onset of vertigo, dizziness, weakness, numbness, speech difficulties, vision changes, and symptoms usually last several minutes or an hour. Yeah. The person usually has hypertension, diabetes, is a smoker or has atrial fibrillation. It is a serious condition which is a sign of blood flow problems in the brain and a precursor of stroke. It happens due to vascular ischemia, but the brain itself is not damaged. It happens because of small clots or narrowing of vessels from atherosclerosis or hypotension during arrhythmias. Mentioned ischemic attack feel as critically important because it serves as a warning sign for an impending stroke. Patients who experience this condition. 15% will experience a full stroke within 3 months. And 7th, most important causes are stroke or tumors, they are rare but life-threatening. When a person has persistent vertigo with severe imbalance, vertical nystagmus and neurological symptoms like ataxia, which means lack of voluntary muscle movements, headache, severe and sudden onset, thunderclap headache in hemorrhagic stroke, dysarthria, slurred or slow speech, diplopia, double vision, MIRCT scan are critical to assess conditions in this case. Red flags which indicate the brain tumors are dizziness or vertigo that does not improve or progressively worsens over weeks or months.
persistent headaches worse in the morning or with activities that increase intracranial pressure such as coughing, bending over, neurological deficiencies, weakness, speech issues, ataxia or visual changes. And seizures.